Hello everybody, Dr. Green here again and today we are going to talk about blending problems. How they are modeled, how they are solved, and why they are different from other model formulations. Now what do blending problems have to do? They're very similar to mixed problems, uh, but generally we are blending different things together. So you may think of this as blending metals to make alloys, uh, blending different liquids to make a new substance, something like that. Uh, where the main differentiation here is that we have a lot of proportions and percentages that are required. Why does that matter? Well, typically we end up with some values on the right hand side of our constraints that have division operators in them. If you may have noticed at this point, we've been using linear programming. Division, exponents, uh, these things are all nonlinear. So our linear solver, right, using the simplex method that we've been using, can't solve those. So the best way to show you how these are different and what's going on is to go through an example. So we're going to start with Chandler Oil Company. You see it's a national oil company that produces barrels of gasoline and oil. One used for cars, the other for heating. These barrels can be sold on the market for $30 and $20 respectively. We already have that set over here. The gas and oil products are both made up of two different types of crude. Crude one has quality rating of 10 points per barrel with 5,000 barrels available. Okay. Crew 2 has a quality rating of 5 with uh, 10,000 barrels available. Chandler Inc. wants to know how to blend its supply of crudes. Right? So there's the keyword there, blend its supply of crudes in order to produce oil with an average quality okay, of rating of 6 and gas with an average quality rating of 8. How can Chandler Inc. accomplish this while maximizing their revenue? And so I've already put all this information over here for us to see. I'm going to go ahead and leave that the way it is. We have selling prices, required quality levels. We have quality points per barrel for crude, and we also have a number of barrels available for each of these. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and start with our decision, right? So we're making gas and oil, and to make that gas and oil, we're mixing crudes. So what we're going to look at is we're going to say we have crude one, we have crude two, we also have gasoline, and we have oil. These are now our decision variables. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to give those a nice red border. And okay, so what we are deciding in this problem uh, is how we mix crude one and crude two, how we blend those two crudes in order to make barrels of gas and oil. Okay, so we know that we want to make a certain amount of gas and oil, all that kind of stuff. We need to know how much we have. So we're going to call this the total made or sold. We're going to assume that we can basically sell everything we make. So gas just adds up here, right? Because there's no real difference here. We're going to assume that barrels of crude and gas and crude and oil are all the same size. So, you know, if, even if I put one barrel of crude one and one barrel of crude two together and I put it all into gas, that will give me two barrels of gas. So we're going to go ahead and sum these up right here. Those will be numbers. So we will go ahead and look at those. I'm going to slide this over to give us a little extra space here. Uh, and then we can look at this. We know we have some limitations on our barrels available. So we are going to take this down here. Right, very similar. Well, how many barrels of crude one do we use? The combination of those put into gas and those into oil. So we can sum those up. And we know this is going to be one of our constraints because we cannot use more of crude one and of crude two than is required for, or uh, that is available to us. Okay, so we have this basic thing here. Okay, so now the big question comes to how do we deal with these quality point requirements? I'm going to get rid of these two lines. I'm going to shift some stuff up here just so it looks a little more clean. Um, how do we deal with these quality point requirements? Well, I want you to think of it this way. I have my decision variables here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this over here to give you a little example. We're going to consider this to be x1. We're going to consider this to be x2, x3, and X4. Now the thing that we wanted to know, so we'll take a look at gasoline. Gas has to have an average quality rating of 6. right? So my average quality 
right here, how would I calculate my average quality? Well, we have these quality points per barrel, right? So if I put crude one, I would just multiply that by 10. Actually, I'm gonna just write this in here for you. It'd be x1 times, well, it'd be 10x1 plus 5x2. Why? Because I'm mixing x1 and x2 barrels of crude into gas. Each one of those barrels has a corresponding value for quality points. So crude one has 10 quality points, crude two has two quality points. We add those all up and to get the average, we divide by the total number of barrels of gasoline that we have. That leaves me with 10x1 plus 5x2 divided by this. And I can do the same thing here if I look at, I can say this is for gas. Well, I can calculate the same thing for oil. Uh, and in this case, I would have 10x3 plus 5x4 over x3 plus x4. So you're thinking, well, Dr. Green, that's great. All we have to do is drop a greater than or equal sign into in here. Okay, so we're in good shape. We have to say greater than for six for oil and eight for gasoline. Okay, greater than six, greater than eight. Uh, but we cannot do that. Why? Because these two cells involve division. Division is a non-linear operation, so it cannot be solved by linear programming. But we do have a little trick that we can do here. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna move the denominator over. So in order to address this issue, what we're gonna end up with is we're gonna have, we're gonna multiply by x1 plus x2, and we're gonna multiply by x3 plus x4, and that allows us to clear our denominators on this side. Uh, and believe it or not, we now have linear constraints because there is no division involved. So you should learn two things from this. One, division, exponents, these are all nonlinear operations you can't use. But if you can reformulate your constraints a little bit, you still can use this. So the way you build your model matters. The way we're gonna add this into the model is we are gonna say quality points obtained and we are going to compare that to quality points required. Okay, now we'll see, we will follow our formula over here. Okay, so we're gonna look at gas first. So, nicely, we can actually use our sum product here. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that. We do the quality points for each crude with gas. We take that, that's exactly what we're doing. 10x1 plus 5x2. We end up with the same thing over here, 10x3 plus times or plus 5x4. This has to be greater than or equal to my quality points required, which is equal to 8 times the sum of x1 and x2. Right? And this will work quite nicely. I can just drag this across. There we go. Easy peasy. Now see, this is the point here that normally makes blending problems difficult. Recognizing this nonlinearity, moving the denominator over to the right-hand side of the constraint, uh, and adjusting your model accordingly. So there we go. We have these here. Some people will choose to format the quality points required so that they have this nice look of given information. Uh, that's up to you in this point. But, you know, people vary in what they, what they require. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is we are just going to maximize our profit or revenue. Right? So we have no costs. So all we have is our res revenue. We're going to go ahead and format cells. We're going to go in here and give it this nice double border. And my revenue is just the sum product of the selling price per barrel and my total barrels sold or made. That is going to have a dollar value to it. And we should be in good shape here. So let's go in. Let's pick up our solver. We are going to set our objective function. We want to maximizing that by changing these cells, those variables. Uh, we are going to go ahead and delete these constraints. We are going to say the barrels used have to be less than or equal to the barrels available. 
and my quality points obtained have to be greater than or equal to my quality points required. So I really only have two constraints here. I am maximizing my profit, and I'm going to use my simplex. Again, we're going to make unconstrained variables non-negative, and we are going to solve and see what happens. Solver found a solution. Now you see I have all these hash marks here. Uh, that's just because this is not wide enough. So I can go here, okay, I used up all those barrels. Um, I made all that much gas and oil and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my quality points obtained are greater than or equal to, okay, and I don't really like the formatting here. I'm gonna go ahead and check that out. And I'm also gonna fix this up. Okay, so now it looks like we're in good shape. I have binding constraints over here. I'm at 40,000, I'm at 60,000, uh, right? And we should all be in good shape. Uh, and this is how the magic happens. So again, blending problems. This is the special sauce. This is what you wanna look at. Be aware of these blending constraints relating averages and percentages that involve division. Take the denominator, move it to the right-hand side of the constraint by multiplying through. It gives you a nice formulation that you can then include in your model. You're probably all wondering why I didn't type barrels used there. I'll go ahead and add that in, and we are good to go.